rate yourself on 1 to 10 on how good of a listener you are. Honestly, do that. Keep it to yourself. All right, everybody got that number in your mind? Okay, keep it in your mind. Uh, but I want to start off the day by asking the question, who likes riddles? Raise your hand if you like riddles. None of you like riddles? Okay, good. Some of you like riddles. That's a good thing. Well, I was on a road trip with one of my best friends, Kyle, a few months ago, and uh, we were driving for four hours to and back from Oklahoma City and Arkansas, and all we did for the whole rides each time was riddles, specifically logic and math riddles. And in fact, I'm still working on one in my head because it's, it's really stumped us. But... Um, if you have a riddle and you want to challenge me with it later after the service, I'd will willingly accept, so feel free to come on and bring it on. Uh, but I'm going to start off the sermon today with a riddle. So if you figure out the answer, I want you to keep it to yourself, okay? Don't tell anybody. And it goes like this. Maybe you, might, you may want to get your pens out, okay? You're the engineer of a train that is departing from Denver, Colorado. There are 36 people on board. At the first stop in Lincoln, Nebraska, 10 get off and 2 get on. At the next stop in Chicago, Illinois, no one gets off, but five people get on. At the third stop in Cincinnati, Ohio, four get off and two get on. And finally, at the fourth stop in New York City, New York, three get off and seven get on. Were you listening? Were you following along? Anybody need me to repeat that? Okay. Who thinks they know it? Raise your hand if you think you know it. Okay, here's, here's the question. What's the name of the engineer? What's the name of the engineer? Raise your hand if you know the answer to that question. Put it high in the air if you know the name. One, two, three, four. Four people in this whole room were listening. Four people were listening. I told you right at the start of the riddle, and I quote, you're the engineer of a train departing from Denver, Colorado. Therefore, the name of the engineer is your own name. And I did this to illustrate a point. We don't listen very well. Or maybe to be more accurate, we try to listen, but we often miss the point. You thought the riddle was going to be about the number of people on the train, but in reality, it was, it was so much simpler than that. We overcomplicate things. We partially listen, and we miss the point of what someone was trying to say. And I'm honored to be able to kick off a series this summer called Popular, or I'm sorry, Contrary to Popular Opinion. And throughout the summer, we'll be diving into the parables of Jesus and comparing them to some of the popular beliefs that we have about ourselves and that society maintains in this day and age. Now, the parables, for those of you who don't know, are simply stories told by Jesus to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. The stories flood the books of the Gospels and, and were one of Jesus' main topics and focus points when he taught. Jesus, the master of all things, he had to be purposeful in this, right? He was purposeful in the way he taught. And as you look at the life of Jesus and as you study him, it becomes evident that everything he did, everything that was written about him, and every word that he spoke was ground-shaking to the history of the world. He knew it, just like I knew it today, that, that, moral, that moral points would be best uh, understood through parables, through stories, through lessons, through riddles, okay, that we would otherwise miss if it, was told, if it was just told plainly to us, that we would often disregard or not listen to. And in fact, as we're, we're diving into the parables this summer, I want you to think about that sometimes as Christ followers, we often miss the point of what Jesus was trying to say in those parables. We often glance over them disregarding their incredible significance that they can have on our life. Sure, Jesus said these words, but are those lessons actually dictating the way that we live our everyday life right now? Are they dictating the way that you run your life? Or are we looking and are we listening, trying to solve life's riddles using the wrong resources? using popular belief of this day and age. You see, the parables of Jesus, they were groundbreaking. They were, they were popular belief stomping, and his words radically changed the beliefs, the views, and the religious practices of his time. When he spoke, he spoke parables to three main groups, right? So I'm just going to summarize them in three main groups. You got a, the, the, the townspeople, which is a.k.a. Um, everyday people, kind of like us, okay? Everyday people. He was, he was 
talking to. He had, he had his disciples, his close followers, those that were following Jesus. And, and that's often us too, people that are trying to follow Jesus. And then the third type of people he spoke to were Pharisees, a.k.a. righteous law keepers strictly following the popular beliefs and religious rules of that day. Now, these parables were radical, right? They were radical and they were used to shatter many of those beliefs. But some of us think that they were only used to shatter the beliefs of that day and age. And I'm here to tell you that they're not. They should have the same effect on us today. And that's why this series is called Contrary to Popular Opinion. Using the parables of Jesus, we will shatter the popular beliefs and ground ourselves in the truth of who Jesus is and the words in his Gospels of Grace. So today, the first popular belief that we are going to look at as a human race is that we are good listeners. As I was walking up on stage, okay, there was a question displayed on the board asking you to rate yourself of how good of a listener you are. Honestly, do not change your answer, okay? If you rated yourself six or above, please raise your hand if you are a good listener. Raise them high like you're proud, like you're a good listener, okay? That's, that's definitely, I'd say, 40% of the room, Okay? 40% of the room of the people in here say that you are a better than average listener. With five being the middle ground on that survey, anybody who rated themselves above a five is better than average. Now, I hate to shatter your belief right off the bat, okay, that you're that good of a listener, but contrary to popular belief, we don't always listen well. We don't always listen well, and I'm not just saying that for the purposes of my sermon. You guys very clearly demonstrated it in my riddle when four of you in the room understood it and listened. Okay? Because we often miss the point of what is being said. We think we listen well, but in all reality, we miss so many things because we're not good listeners. And I would say the same is true for us on listening to God. If I put the question up on the board at the beginning, silently in your head, write yourself on 1 to 10 of how good of a listener you are to God's voice, my guess is that number would go down. My guess is it would slightly drop. And in many ways, that's shocking considering we're in a room full of people who, who claim to be following Jesus. Now, we heard Tony Spack speak last week, and he was bold enough to listen to God's voice and call. But when we hear stories like his, where he has to sell everything he owns, he has to uproot a career that has been here forever, he has to move to a foreign country, not only with himself, but his family. Sometimes listening to God's voice is scary, right? That is a scary thing. You see, I did a similar survey, survey uh, I'm sorry, I did a similar sermon for the youth a little less than a year ago about this topic, and I asked some survey questions. The first one I asked was, how did you hear God speak directly to you this last week? And a small percentage of them, about 25 to 30 percent, uh, were actually able to provide the answer off the top of their heads. Now, this is not bashing the youth in any way. In fact, the youth of this church are in many ways leading and guiding the direction of where we are going as a church. But it is indicative of the truth that contrary to popular belief, we aren't always good listeners. We have a loving God who communicates to us. He communicates to his people. He talks with us. He loves us. He moves in our lives and he speaks directly to us. However, a sad reality is that many of us don't feel or experience that on a regular or consistent basis. For example, hearing from him directly in the course of this last week. The sad reality is many of you probably didn't hear from God directly in this last week or haven't ever consistently heard from God on a regular basis. Now, if you're, if you're in that place from not hearing God or, or even believing that he speaks, I want you to know that it is okay. It is okay. I have been in that place in my life, and it's okay. I've also been in a place where I've been crying out to God. I've talked to Him constantly, and I've tried to hear from Him, but still, I didn't hear a thing. And at the same time, I've been scared of what He actually might say if He did talk, if He was speaking directly to me, and if I listened. Now, in that same mention, I, 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 in the same sermon I mentioned a second ago to the youth, I also surveyed the students with this question. If you tried as in you put in specific effort, for, effort forward to listening to God this last week, but maybe you didn't hear him say anything, raise your hand. Now, the percentage shot up when I asked that question. It went from 25% to about 75 to 80%. 75 to 80% of the youth had talked to God but didn't necessarily hear from him. And then finally, I asked one final question in that sermon. 
If you've ever talked to God before or said a prayer to him at some point in time in your, in your life, raise your hand. In fact, let's do that right now. If you've ever talked to God at any point in time in your life, raise your hand. Look around the room, okay? That's 95 to 100% of us, and the same statistic was true with the youth. Almost everybody has talked to God at some point in time. And for many of us, it's probably been more than once, right? It's, for most of us in this room, it's probably been hundreds or thousands of times that we have talked to God. So that begs us a question, because it's saying that we're doing a good job of talking. So the question is, does God do a good job of listening? I mean, after all, we're talking about how good, or should I say, not good of listeners we are. Therefore, is, is God a good listener? The answer, the answer is yes. Okay? The answer is yes. And I could provide you with at least 50 different verses and passages in the Bible that display how good of a listener that God is. But if you are in a place where you are not believing that God is a good listener, let me just give you a few verses to show you that he is listening to you when you talk to him. 1 John 5, 14 through 15, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if, we, and if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. Proverbs 15, 29, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Now, typically in any relationship, a conversation goes two ways, right? Uh, while, while someone is talking, the other person is listening, and then they respond, and they're talking, and then you are listening. Uh, but based on those verses, we know that God is listening, and, and based on those polls that we just took, it makes it sound like we do a majority of the talking and hardly any listening. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but think about how God created us. He gave us Two ears and one mouth. Think about how weird it would look if I was up on stage and I had two mouths on the side of my face and one ear protruding from my face. I would be one goofy looking person. No, God did not create us with two mouths and one ear. He created us with two ears and one mouth. You want to know why? Oh, pick me. Everybody, pick Wes. I know. It's because listening is doubly important compared to talking. God wants us to listen, yet the statistics show and our hearts say that when it comes to being in our own relationship with God, we do double the talking and hardly any listening. Now, as a pastor, as your brother in Christ, I desire for all of us, including myself, I am in this category, to be hearing from God. We are God's people. We are his children. He loves us so much. What kind of relationship do we have with God if we aren't seeking after his voice, his heart, and listening to him all the time? My goal, and the goal of this parable that Jesus taught, and we are going to study today, is to teach us how we can be a place from hearing God all the time and be ready to receive his words. So that's what we're going to address today, is how do we listen to God amidst all of the talking, all of the noise, and everything that is happening around us? How do we actually become good listeners, like popular belief says that we are? Now, luckily for us, Jesus himself told a story pertaining exactly to the subject, and I think you'll, you'll find it super fascinating if you just sit back and listen. See what I did there? Okay. Okay. To what he has to say. The words will be up on the screen, so follow along. It's a, it's a good long passage. Here we go. It takes place in Mark 4. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them so many things by parables, and his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did, so that they did not bear much grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, and some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret to the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? 
How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among the thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown. Now, before we get into the, the four different types of soils that Jesus talks about here and he references in this parable, we have a few key points to understand. And so what I want everybody to do is to turn your listening ears on. I work with youth all the time, so you're going to actually have to do this with me, okay, like you're a youth. Turn your listening ears on. Move your hands up from your sides and turn your listening ears on. Crank them on, okay? There we go. Now turn to your neighbor and say, are your listening ears on? That was like half of you, all right? All the youth, if, if you were youth, they would be screaming that in their neighbor's ear because they love to scream whenever they get the chance to. So now that I have your attention, okay, and now all of your listening ears are on, or at least they should be, okay, we can dive in. The first thing we have to recognize is where Jesus was teaching from and who he was teaching to. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd, a.k.a. the townspeople and his followers, that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. Now think about how crazy this is for just a second. There were so many people. The beach, a huge public place, was so packed with people that Jesus had no room to stand there. So he literally got into a boat and he taught from a boat. He had to create his own stage to teach from. This indicates something. This indicates that Jesus' words were so important that people, overwhelming amounts of people, gathered around just to listen to hear him speak. So the first, the first truth, the first point in knowing how to hear and listen for God's voice is this. God's voice is worth listening to. On your notes, you can fill that in on the back side of your bulletin. God's voice is worth listening to. And I'm here to tell you on behalf of Jesus himself that listening to God's voice is worth crowding around to hear. If the crowd gathering around Jesus and Jesus teaching from a boat, though, still isn't enough evidence for you that God's voice is worth listening to, let's take a look at the first word out of his mouth. He says, listen, a farmer went out to sow a seed. Now, it's not just a Listen up here, folks. I got something important to say. Listen. Come on, guys. Come on, listen. It's a listen! Exclamation point! He wants you to hear what he has to say. So the second point is this. Anything Jesus says is important. Anything Jesus says is important. Always take note of Jesus' words in the Bible and in your life. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, probably many of you have, but in the Bible, there's, uh, when Jesus is speaking, his words are often in red. Why is that? It's because it's important. What he has to say is standing out. So whether you read them in the Bible or you hear them from God in some other way, it's always important. Okay, so we've established that God's voice is worth listening to. But through our poll earlier, Okay, we've discovered that many of us uh, don't necessarily hear God's voice regularly or clearly. So the question is why? Why do we struggle to listen for God's voice? Why is it that contrary to popular belief, we aren't always good listeners? Now Jesus makes it very clear in this parable. There are three reasons why we struggle to hear and listen for God's voice to us. And it all boils down to the bone that connects our ears to our heart. Trust me, there is a bone that connects our ears to our heart. Just go with it. Okay? Um, listening to God all depends on the soil of our heart. If you aren't hearing from God, or you never have, I would venture to say that your heart is like one or multiple of the soils that Jesus speaks at the beginning of this parable. Now stick with me here because as we talk through it, it may not be, okay, but likely it's one of those things. Jesus says this, he says, listen, a farmer went out to sow a seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell along the path and the birds came up and ate it. Because this is a parable, Right? Because this is a parable, we know that each thing in this parable is meant to illustrate a certain point, a lesson. So just so we know, so we're all on the same understanding here, the farmer in this parable is God. Right? The seeds represent his voice and him speaking into our lives. 
And then the soil, that leaves us, of course, to be the soil, our hearts. Now, after his, after his disciples had heard this parable, they were still confused at what he had to say. So he goes on to explain the parable in more, more plain terms that they can understand. He says, some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. In your life, God is constantly planting seeds and trying to talk to you, but our hearts are not in the spot where we are listening and actively trying to seek him out. When that happens, the seeds just hit the ground and they sit there. They are waiting to be planted and heard by us, but when we aren't looking for them, Satan comes, birds come, and they pluck them off the ground and eat them. You see, Satan is constantly trying to disrupt our communication with God in any way that he possibly can. And he does it so frequently that sometimes we often miss the point or the message that God was giving us before we even knew it was there. And then we go to look for it, and it's too late. Satan has already ruined, he's distorted, he's destroyed, and taken away that communication. But what's our typical response? You know it because you've done it. I know it because I certainly have done it. We are complacent and we are unaware of God's voice. And sometimes we even turn and get angry at God, saying, God, why didn't you speak? The opposite's true. God spoke to us, yet sometimes we just missed it because our heart wasn't in the right place to receive it. So the first lesson from this parable of the sower, of the sower and to hearing God's voice is actually becoming a good listener like popular belief says we are. We have to be ready to receive and aware of Satan's schemes. Be ready to receive and aware of Satan's schemes. Don't let your heart become a soil where a seed lands and is snatched away before you even notice it. Be ready, be open, be willing, and ready to listen to God. Now that may require you, like that video showed, to sit still and stop and listen. Psalm 46.10 says this, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. It may require diligence on your part, to actively try to listen for him for more than two seconds before you go off and text or do laundry or shave or take care of the kids or whatever. It requires consistent times throughout the day to listen to him. It, requ it requires us to be ready. Next, Jesus says in this parable, some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Now, my guess is that many of us have fallen into this category at some point in time in our lives. We want to hear from God, yet when we do, it doesn't always stick. When we do, it doesn't take root. Raise your hand if you want to hear from God. Okay? Most of us in this room want to hear from God. I would raise my hand high. I want to be hearing from God all the time. Okay? And that's awesome. However, when we do hear from God, those words don't necessarily stick around for long. We forget. We get busy. We get caught up in sin. We get scorched with life's heat and sun that is thrown our way. Whenever something happens, we turn away from those words. We blame God. We get angry. We think negatively. That's a big one that I've seen. People think negatively, and that really affects how you hear from God, your thoughts, right? And we turn to other sources for our joy. Jesus described it like this when he was telling the disciples. He said, others like seeds sown on rocky places hear the word and at once they receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. This is us. This is us. This is why we struggle to listen to God and hear from him clearly and consistently. It's because our past experiences have affected how we perceive God to speak. When in all reality, sometimes the soil of our heart has no root in the truth of who God is. We know him on a surface level, not in a deep relationship. The second tip in hearing God's voice is this. Don't let trouble, persecution, or difficulty dry up your soil from listening to God. In order to listen to God's voice and hear it, we have to build our roots deep into the soil. When we hear something from God, we must remember it, cling to it, and trust it. Then, when we listen to him again and again, we can continue to build our roots deeper and deeper so that when a trial does come, we are rooted in the truth of who God is. Now, I applaud anybody in this room who has roots that are deep in Jesus Christ. If you have roots that are deep in Jesus Christ, I applaud you because you can withstand 
the sun and the scorching that life, life brings you because you are rooted in the truth of who God is. But do not get complacent. Don't stop growing. Don't stop feeding them. Continue to grow deeper in Christ. And that's why we as pastors are constantly encouraging you to read and study the Bible on your own, to get involved with a life group, to go and serve, to love other people, to do so many things. It helps ground the root, it grounds it helps ground the words and root your belief in Jesus Christ and what God is teaching us. Jesus continues on and he says, Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. This is the one that traps all of us 100%. Your heart is pretty good soil. Your heart's pretty good soil, but there's a lot of things growing in it. And that's the issue. The soil allows both good and bad things to grow in it. Now, has anybody ever done weeding before? Like pulling weeds. I hate weeding, okay? I hate pulling weeds. Now, now believe it or not, there's a parable that Jesus talked called the parable of the weeds that we may look at later on the summer, uh, but that's beside the point, and unless it's not because of the fact that, that Jesus knows there's, there's great illustrative power in weeds and thorns, right? We talk about it here. So, so there, there was this one time in college, okay, I moved into a house with 11 guys, okay, and the backyard was overflowing with weeds. Now, I, I know you're probably all thinking, why in the world would you live in a house with 11 guys? And let me tell you, rent was cheap, it was a lot of fun, and it actually worked out great, okay? The house was awesome. Now, put 11 girls in one house, I don't think it would work that well, okay? But 11 guys in one house, we made it happen. Now, I, of course, was only two, or one of the two, that actually cared what our yard looked like, okay? I cared what our yard looked like, and so when we moved in, okay, we had weeds all over the place at this house, all over the place, and we know that just a few weeds here and there, okay, we all know this, that, that when they're in the yard or in the driveway or in the cracks or whatever, it just kind of makes our yard look bad. So, so if we have that standard, my house just was a complete disaster. Weeds were overflowing from every possible crevice, every possible spot in the lawn. And so I decided, because I was one of two people who cared, to spend eight hours of my life one day pulling weeds, and removing all of them in the yard. And I, it, it was miserable work, but I knew it had to be done. And once I finished the yard, it just looked so much better. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. Weeds suck. Weeds suck. They come back in numbers. They're like, ha, 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 Wes, you thought you removed me, but no, 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 no. Well, you didn't forget about my brothers and sisters, and we just sprang up where you thought you didn't have us. And I was like, oh, no, you didn't. And I got my weed gun out, okay, I got my, my tools out to scrape them out of the ground, and I went back at it, and I was pulling those weeds out and spraying them down with that poison as best as I could. But guys, weeds suck. The next weekend, I came back out, and those weeds came back in force, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Come on now. And so for week after week after week, I would slowly but surely remove those weeds from our yard. I would slowly but surely remove those weeds from the yard. They thought that they couldn't be defeated. But I was determined, and I was going to remove them. And as time progressed, I remained diligent in attacking, removing and pruning those weeds, and slowly but surely, our yard started to look pretty good. Now, I, stay, I, I tell that story because the same is true for our hearts and how we listen to God. Many of us have a fertile soil, but we let anything grow in it. God is constantly speaking to us, yet we don't hear from him because it's drowned out by the noise of this world. We don't listen because we are listening to everything else and distracted by it. I have to go to work. I got to go to school. My boss says do this. I have to take the kids to soccer practice. I got to make sure my aging parents are, are, are staying medicated and cared for. What did he or she post on Facebook? You should check out this cool new restaurant. It was awesome. Traffic sucks. Does anybody know how to drive in Denver? Hey, man, you want to hang out after work? Don't forget to pick up the groceries, honey. Have you heard that new song? Did you see that new movie? I gotta take my kids to dance practice. Honey, make sure you, you clean the house, do the dishes, pick up the dog poop. Don't forget about your massive presentation at work tomorrow. Did you see that episode of Game of Thrones last night? I can't believe the game. Wanna come over for poker? I really want that new phone. Wow, that shirt is pretty. I wish I could look like her. Dang, did you see that catch? Occasionally you hear, hey, don't forget to love your friend who is hurting. Why don't you help out at the service project at church? 
Just read that psalm. It'll speak so much life into your situation. I love you, and I want to talk to you. Jesus explained it best when he described it this way. Still others, like seed sown among the thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke out the word, making it unfruitful. And to be completely frank and honest with you all, I am sick and tired of seeing weeds choke you and me out in life. I'm tired of seeing generations of Christ followers who don't listen for God's voice because of the weeds all around them. And I'm just going to say it and you're not going to like it. But that's what Jesus did in his parables, and I'm not afraid to do it here. I'll be the first to admit that God is speaking to me with these words I'm about to tell you. I am sick and tired of the excuse of, I don't have time. I am sick and tired of the excuse of, I don't have time. That portrays the heart of a person whose soil is full of thorns. They make excuses and get caught up in the busyness of life so much that they choke out the seed that God is trying to plant in them. They choke out the voice of God by not prioritizing time to listen to him. Remember, everything Jesus says is important. Yet when we look at our heart, it shows that it's actually the least important thing on our list. Jesus himself, the man of God, even made time to get away, to pray, talk, and listen for God. It's specifically recorded in the Bible that Jesus goes alone to pray 25 different times. Now, we know that he did it more frequently than this, um, probably daily, but it's specifically recorded in the Gospels as an example for us. He knew that many of us would have a heart similar to this soil where the weeds and thorns choke out his voice. And Jesus did not allow the excuse of, I don't have time to choke out God's voice. He made it a priority day in and day out. He sought after it with a heart full of good soil. He actually lived out the belief that we are good listeners. So point three is this. Don't let the weeds and thorns of life choke out God's voice. Now there's a funny video. There is a super funny video of a boy named Mateo who struggles lightly, to put it that way, to listen. And as you watch this video, which has over 65 million views, making it one of the best videos of all time, okay, I want you to think about the soil or soils that Mateo's heart is reflecting. And also on a humorous note, I just want you to enjoy it and laugh because it's, it's quite funny. So here it is. Okay, but I have to yell at you guys. Okay, what? Like everything they do at this house, they can touch everything at Grandma's house. Okay. Okay, then what? Then you're not listening to me. Then you're not listening to me. I asked you not to do something. Linda, but listen to me. Look at if we do something, if you get that out, that bird thing off, you're gonna break it. Okay, but I'm asking, I'm letting you know but that you cannot. You know, Linda, no, Linda, I'm. Linda, lick it, lick it. You're not listening to me. Linda, listen to me now. Lick it, lick listen to me now. Listen to me. No, you're not listening. I said no cupcakes, and you try to get cupcakes, and you try to ask grandma. Linda, Didn't you? Linda, lick it, lick it, lick it. If we do something right out this, if we, if we get closer, she can't even get them. She can burn your butt. Your What's going to burn your butt? Like, no. You and Kevin don't listen, so I have to give both of you guys pop pals in your butt. But Linda, but Grandpa's but uh, going to give me pop pals in your butt. No, he's not. Yeah. I have to, you want, you don't want me to hit Kevin or you don't want him to spank you? No. Why? Because anybody wants to spank me. Then I have to spank Kevin. But he's, the, but he's my little pop-ups. He's your little pop-ups, but he doesn't listen. But Linda, honey, 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 honey. look at, look at this. Right now, they can't do anything if we can't get everything out of the wall. If we're going to break everything down. I'm not breaking anything down. I'm just letting you know Linda, you cannot it, have it, cupcakes it, for dinner. It, Linda, Linda. Like this thing, and I will belong to you. Anything, you can get anything and anything and anything. 
I'm done arguing with you. I'm, I'm not arguing, arguing with, you. with you. You need to listen to the things that I say because I'm the mom and I'm the no, adult. No, they can listen to me all the time to get them to, to, to stink. To, to, to stink. To, 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 to I'm them, to done break. arguing with you. No, no, I'm done arguing with you. I told you it's hilarious, right? It's hilarious. But it speaks volumes into this sermon. Which of the soils do you think Mateo's heart fit best and why? Now, I asked this question to the students when, we, when I did that sermon, okay? And they made some incredible points for each soil. I, I'm in complete concurrence with them. And I think Mateo's heart honestly reflects all three soils at different points of that video. The words are plucked away before he even hears them. He starts saying, listen, Linda, listen, listen, look, honey. Okay, before, before the mom even started to talk. What's happened in his life recently is scorching out the desire to listen to his mom. And then finally, he's simply distracted to get those cupcakes that he wants so much that he doesn't listen. And when it comes to listening to God, I think it's pretty obvious we don't want to be like Mateo. Okay, we don't want to be like Mateo. So to transition the last soil that Jesus mentions in this parable, it's not a soil that spoils or, or talks back, okay? But it's a soil that produces crops. He says in verses 8 through 9, Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, and some 100 times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Did you catch that? Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Last time I checked, you all have two ears and you turned your listening ears on. Okay? So point number four is this. When our hearts are good soil, Jesus speaks and he wants us to hear. He wants you to hear it. Now, maintaining a fertile soil is difficult to do. Think about it. Farming is a lot of work. But it yields a a great crop if you put forth the effort. As Jesus said, when your heart is good soil and you listen to the seeds God is planting in your life, they will multiply some 30, some 60, some 100 times. But it takes work. Listen. It takes effort on your part. Listen. It takes effort on your part. Contrary to popular belief, we aren't always good listeners. Jesus shows in this parable three-fourths of the time of the soils that that he described is someone who doesn't always listen well. And unfortunately, as humans, three-fourths of the time, on average, we don't listen well, despite our own ratings of ourselves. There are just so many things in this life that hinder our listening ability. Now, however, we can become good listeners, especially to God, if we keep our soil fertile for Him. Now, I put together a list taken straight from the Bible, taken straight from these passages to help you maintain a good soil in your life and be a good listener, right? So take notes, follow along. The first one, seek God out and deliberately set time to listen for Him and to listen to Him. Like, Jesus did this Himself, When Jesus does something, it typically means we should do it, okay? Point number two, allow the farmer, God, to plant the seeds. If you don't have a soil that is ready to be planting seeds, okay, you need to make it ready so that God can plant seeds in your life. Three, continually check the soil of your heart and work to keep it ready for God. When you're farming, you don't just leave that soil to sit there by itself once you plant those seeds, right? Nothing's going to grow. You got to do a lot of work to make sure it grows. And, and, and what do you have to do to make sure it grows? Well, the first thing, point number four, is you got to water the seeds. Jesus himself in John 4 talks about the fact that he is the living water. Let Jesus water the seeds in your life. Be open to what he has to say. And then Jesus also talks about later on that he is the light of the world. You need water and you need light to make seeds grow. Jesus is that water and light. Remove the weeds that choke you, right? This one should be easy to remember. Just think about me on stage explaining my college story experience, okay? You can always think back and say, man, I got to remove that from my life, okay? Get that weed gun out, attack it week after week to remove those weeds from the yard. Seven, prune the fruit, that cro- the fruit or crops that come with seeds or from the seeds. In John 15, it's the whole chapter about sanctification, 
If you haven't read it, go read it this week, and it'll tell us that we need to constantly be pruning different areas of our life, and God is pruning areas of our life to be more like him. Eight, turn the soil with tools, prayer, scripture, worship, to keep it fresh. Right? You want to constantly be adding and, and, and producing good things in your soil, and you do that through prayer, worship, scripture. Nine, listen to other godly people in your life. Right? Jesus was a very godly person, and we, distru- and we discovered in this, this chapter that many people gathered around to hear him listen. There are many different godly people in your life. Listen to what they have to say. And finally, the last one, be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. When you listen to God, he will speak. He's always communicating. He's always planting seeds on the soil. Are you keeping a good soil by listening to him? He speaks in many ways and in many forms to all of his people. And it may look different for each person. Depending on the soil, the crop may look different as well. Think about if we only could eat corn all the time. Life would get boring and would get old. No, there's so many different plants and crops out there for us to eat. The same is true for us. God plants different crops and different seeds in our hearts. And he uses your unique gifts and abilities for his kingdom. And he speaks to us. In many different ways too, right? So, so if you are struggling to maybe hear God's voice right now, or maybe you're stuck in the rhythm of only hearing it like in one certain way, or you think he only speaks in one way, I'm just going to give you a list of like 13 ways that he speaks. And this in no way is putting God in a box of how he can speak. It's just maybe sparking some new ideas for you on how to hear him and listen for him. First one is through scripture. If you aren't in the Bible, man, you're probably not hearing him speak very often. Read your Bible daily. It is God's written word to you. Two, sometimes he speaks out loud with words. We can hear him. Three, sometimes he speaks in our head in a still, small voice. Four, through journaling. God speaks through me through journaling a lot. I write down a prayer, and then in a different colored pen, I write what God says to me. Right? Try that out if you've never tried to journal before. Five, through the Holy Spirit. We are, we are gifted the Holy Spirit as believers the moment we decide to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. He is living within us. He is talking to us. Be open to what he has to say. Six, other people. Seven, sermons or talks. Eight, worship music, how we worship God through the lyrics. Nine, nature, right? I went hiking and and backpacking on Friday and Saturday this week, and it was amazing just to be in in God's glorious creation and hear him and see him through that. Ten, experiences that we've had or heard about. Stories. Dreams, visions, riddles, opportunity. And that's just to get started. That's just to get you started. I want you to know there's there's absolutely no limit to his power on how he speaks or his communication. I just want you to listen for his voice. So that leaves us with one final question that I know many of you may still be asking. Some of you may not feel like you are one of the first three soils that Jesus mentioned, but that your heart is, is actually good soil. You're eager, you're ready, and you're attentive when it comes to listening to God's voice. Yet you still don't hear it. You haven't seen it in any of those ways. And I'll be honest with you, I've been in that place in my life many times. I've struggled to hear them. And it's always difficult, but it stretches our faith muscle. It stretches our faith muscle. And I want you to know that God not speaking is sometimes how he is speaking to us. We just may not be tuned in or found the right channel, or found the right tools to help those seeds and the soil grow. This is when listening to God requires everything. It requires patience. It requires trust. It requires obedience. It requires examining the words of Jesus in his parables and looking at them with a new lens. Even though we may not be hearing God's voice in a certain moment, doesn't mean he isn't talking to us. We have to keep the soil fertile, fertile and ready to produce a crop from God's words. Just like that tricky riddle that I asked you to solve at the beginning, there are many times we miss the point of what was being said and what God was saying to us. We miss because the seeds are plucked away, they are scorched by sun, or they are choked out by weeds. Yet, if we are open, if we are ready, if we are willing to receive and maintain a good soil, Like Jesus talks about, we know that the seeds will take root and they will grow. He tells us that when we listen to his voice, we produce a plentiful crop. 
So that's what Jesus wants us to learn from this parable. Were you listening? Let's pray. God, we thank you just for the opportunity to gather as your church and hear from you and read directly from your word about what Jesus had to say in regards to listening. Lord, and I, I confess as a sinner that sometimes I miss the point of what you're trying to say to me. I confess, God, that I don't listen well to you. And I pray right now that we as a church, we as individuals in relationship with you, can really set time apart, can really seek to focus on hearing your voice and listening to what you have to say because, man, your voice is so precious. It is so great. It is so true, the words that you speak into our lives. And we want to hear them, God. You know, you know how to speak to our hearts. May we just be open and ready to receive. It's in your name we pray. Amen.